The Voxlab Aquila S2 is able to print at high speeds. A direct drive extruder with a fine stainless steel drive wheel and an all metal hotend allow high printing speeds at temperatures up to 300 degrees Celsius. Voxlab is a sub brand of Flash Forge, one of the most successful 3D printer manufacturers. Flash Forge has been manufacturing 3D printers since 2011. The company's printers are among the best FDM printers available today. With the sub brand Voxlab, cheap and good 3D printers are to hit the DIY market. In the Voxlab Aquila S2, the most important assemblies are updated, but without changing the essential design of the predecessors. For instance, a magnetic print bed with pay coating and a new hot end extruder combination are the only visible updates compared to its predecessor, the Aquila X2. However, these two upgrades elevate the affordable 3D printer to a whole new level. Thanks to the improvements, a very long list of printable materials is now available. PEG, PLA, ABS, ASA, nylon, PAT, and TPU, as well as many other plastics, can be processed with the 3D printer. Like the longer LK5 Pro, the Voxlab Aquila S2 utilizes a low-cost motion system of V-slot aluminum profiles and solid Delrin V-wheels. So, welcome to our new product review episode. If you are new in our channel then please subscribe our channel and press bell icon for notification of our new videos. The number of individual components in the box of the Voxlab Aquila S2 may seem overwhelming at first. However, thanks to the illustrated instructions, the setup is possible in approximately 45 minutes. Small parts like screws are well sorted according to size. The 3D printer comes with the necessary tools for assembly. The package also includes a replacement nozzle and a needle for cleaning the filament nozzle. A replacement for the rubber feet attached via double-sided adhesive tape is also included. Our test device also included various filaments for testing, normally, Voxlab only supplies 50 grams of PLA. Which is barely enough for the first calibrations. Compared to its predecessor, the Aquila X2, the Hotend, extruder combination and the heated print bed have undergone significant improvements. This considerably increases the number of materials that the new Aquila S2 can handle. The Aquila S2 features a good base build. Everything looks tidy here. A glance under the covers shows that Vox Labs cable management is also well thought out. All cables are secured properly with cable ties and combined into several stable cable harnesses. The connectors are also secured with a bit of glue to prevent them from rattling loose. Only the display cable looks a bit out of place. It does not grind on the floor, but the colorful cable could still be secured to the casing with adhesive tape as a precaution. A Nation and 32G455 controls our test device. With the somewhat unusual 32-bit microcontroller, the 3D printer performs well. This controller has a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4 with 144KB SRAM. The variable memory is thus sufficient for mesh bed leveling and other advanced features, should one decide to upgrade the hardware and firmware. However, there aren't many Frigpio pins on the Aquila mainboard. Hence, our test unit is the N32 version of the Aquila S2. There is also the slightly cheaper H32 version with a different microcontroller. Although the microcontroller is not officially supported by Marlin and other open source firmware, there are some versions available for the Aquila 3D printers. For example, there is a Marlin version from Alexx on GitHub that offers interesting features. However, the original firmware from Voxlab is basically sufficient. V-slot aluminum profiles and Delrin rollers are well known from many inexpensive 3D printers. This makes the Aquila S2 stiff enough to guarantee good printing results. Covers enclose the pulleys to protect against injury. All cuts on the profiles are right angled, which means that the built up printer is also angled. Only the belt tensioners, which are made of plastic, do not seem as sturdy as the rest of the printer. The Zine motor is also attached via a plastic bracket. However, since the stepper motor of the Z axis rests on the 4x4 profile of the base, it is quite sufficient. 
The Voxlab Aquila S2 is controlled via USB cable or via the large screen located on the right side. Many parameters of the printer can be set or changed using the rotary encoder. The values for maximum speed, acceleration, and jerk can also be manipulated through the screen. Likewise, the preset values for heating can be adjusted. However, you won't find any bed leveling assistant on the Aquila S2. The large screen is easy to read and the brightness of the display is more than sufficient. Code files for the printer can be provided via Microsd card. The SD card has to be connected to a computer in order to do so. An 8GB Microsd card and a suitable USB adapter were included in the package. The original Voxlab Aquila hit high waves in the 3D printing community due to the failure of the protective power off feature when the temperature error occurred. Our test device with the Nation and 32G455 and the Aquila 6.1.1 firmware does not show this fire hazardous behavior. Both when short circuiting the thermistors and when manipulating the heating process with cold rags or soldering irons, the heating elements shut down safely. Nevertheless, we recommend checking the protective shutdown. To do so, for example, the brass nozzle can be held at 60 degrees Celsius with a damp cloth during heating. After a short time, a warning tone should sound and the nozzle should then cool down. Thanks for watching this video. If you think this video is useful, then please give a like in this video and share with others. Bye for now.